You know, I was talking to the chairman of Intel a while back, and he says, we have a lot of high-tech, high-paying jobs, but we can't fill them with American college graduates. We have to go to India and Pakistan and Japan, South Korea, to get people who can do these high-tech jobs and make these high-tech salaries. That should say something to us about what we are fundamentally doing wrong in our schools. And, you know, particularly uh, in our public school system, where we spend so much time teaching the kids about alternative families and not enough teaching them about the basics of mathematics and science. It's killing us, you know, and, and all the political correctness in the school. Uh, you know, the kids will have plenty of time to find out about that, but they don't have plenty of time to get the kind of educational foundation that will prepare them adequately for the future. And then you throw on top of that situations where we don't even take the best practices in education, like charter schools. And we allow teacher unions and politicians to suppress the charter schools in favor of the failing schools in order to cater to teacher unions. Does that make any sense at all? You know, this, these are the kinds of things that are happening in America. It's almost like we're reading a manual, how to destroy a great nation. And, and, and then, you know, going down the checklist and doing all of those kinds of things. And we cannot afford to do that. But, you know, you think back to 1831 when Alexis de Tocqueville came to America. The Europeans were so fascinated. How could this nation, barely 50 years old, already be competing with all the powers of Europe on almost every level? Nothing like had it ever happened before in the history of the world. And so he was going to dissect it all out and analyze what was actually going on because they didn't really believe it anyway. And he looked at our our government, our system, our divided government was duly impressed. And he said, well, let me look at their educational system. And he was blown away. Anybody finishing the second grade was completely literate. A beaver trapper could read the newspaper, could tell them how our government worked, could have a sophisticated conversation. Only the aristocracy in Europe was able to do that. But it was that level of education and the ability to do things and to teach other, each other that gave those early settlers so much of an advantage. That's how they were able to go from one ocean to the other across a, a rugged and hostile terrain. They had that can-do attitude that allowed them to build roads and structurally sound bridges and containment facilities and dams and to invent things when there was a problem. That's the kind of nation that we were. That's how we reached the pinnacle so quickly and a higher pinnacle than anybody else had ever reached before. And if you really want to know what we thought about education, go back and look at our previous book, uh, America the Beautiful. Our, our current book is One Nation, which, as you probably know, is number one in the New York Times bestseller list. <laughs> <laughs> but our previous book, America the Beautiful, was too. And the thing that they had in common, my first four books I wrote with professional co-writers. The last two I wrote with my lovely wife, Candy. <laughs> so... But if you go back and you look at the education chapter, you will see that we extracted um, from the exit exam for a middle school certificate in the early to mid-1800s the questions that you had to be able to answer. And I think you will very rapidly recognize that most college graduates today could not answer those questions. We have dumbed things down to that level, and we continue to dumb things down. 
And it's really time for us to stop making excuses for people and start having expectations for people. And it will make all the difference in the world.